The Nike Alpha Fly is the king of marathon shoes. But from ASICS, a new challenger emerges. Is the Metaspeed Sky a legitimate heir, or is it just a pretender to the throne? It's time to lace up these super shoes and take them for a run. Eleven point three four miles for today's workout, which included a three times two mile reps at marathon to half marathon effort with three minutes of recovery in between each of those repetitions. A perfect workout to take the ASICS Metaspeed Sky out for a marathon pace run. And I did the similar workout three times two miles at marathon to half marathon effort in the Alpha Fly earlier this week, so I can run in these two shoes and put them head to head. Now, before I give you my thoughts on these two shoes in a marathon pace battle, I do want to go over some disclosures. The Alpha Fly is a pair of shoes that I purchased myself. The ASICS Metaspeed Sky is a pair of shoes that was sent to me by Running Warehouse and ASICS for the purpose of review. However, in either event, no one is paying me to make this video or to include any of their shoes into a battle video. And no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Nike Alpha Fly versus the ASICS Meta Speed Sky. Now these are two of the best super shoes on the market right now, in my opinion, but let's go over what's in each of these shoes that makes them so special. With the Alpha Fly, we've got that wonderful Zoom X foam, 40 inches of stack height in the heel with a four millimeter drop, giving us 36 millimeters of stack height that's combined of Zoom X foam, a carbon fiber plate, and those giant dual Zoom Air airbags up front. The upper is made out of Atom Knit, the next generation of Flyknit. I've long been a fan of Flyknit and I enjoy the Atom Knit even more. On the outsole, there's actually an ample amount of rubber coverage in the forefoot. Some would argue even too much rubber in the forefoot. And there's some rubber skids along the sides of the heel to protect that precious Zumex foam. This entire package comes in at a weight of 7.4 ounces, making it a shoe that looks a lot heavier than it actually is. It's actually a relatively lightweight shoe. For the ASICS Metaspeed Sky, we've got a little bit less stack height. We've got 38 millimeters of stack height and a little bit more of a drop. We've got a five millimeter drop, giving us 33 millimeters of FF Turbo midsole foam, which is a brand new foam that we haven't seen before from ASICS. It is a very Zoom X-like foam, I will have to say. It has a lot of those same magical qualities. It is a nylon-based foam, so from a high level, they should be very similar. In this shoe, you also have a carbon fiber plate. The upper is a single layer mesh that is super strong, even though it is very thin, very lightweight, and super breathable. On the outsole, there is ASICS grip, which is different than the AHAR, which we've seen in a lot of other ASICS shoes. This is a lot lighter. There's a lot less of it, but it still provides plenty of that traction. And it too has some little heel skids, to, again, to protect that precious foam, the FF Turbo in this case. This entire package, Feels like it's a lot lighter. It looks like a lot lighter. It looks like a much smaller shoe. It's hard to believe that these are both size nine shoes. The Alpha Fly just looks so much bigger, but it's only coming in at 0.1 of an ounce lighter at 7.3 ounces for my US men's size 
nine. So with those numbers and stats aside, what is it like to run in these shoes? And specifically, what is it like to run in these shoes as a non-elite, but at marathon paces? Because I think that's where this comparison gets the most interesting. First, let's talk about the Alpha Fly. Very rightfully so, an extremely well-regarded shoe, a favorite among so many runners that are out there from the pro to the amateur runner alike. It has just that magnificent ZoomX foam, which we've been seeing for a lot of years that I do think that Nike has been tinkering with slightly, but I think they've really nailed down the composition, just that right amount of firmness, squishiness, but just a very quick response. It compresses and comes back very quickly with a high level of efficiency, or at least what feels like a high level of efficiency on my foot. And there's just so much of it in the heel that's gonna give your foot a lot of protection from the impact and the repeat impact from all those foot strikes over the course of a marathon. In the forefoot, you've got an even softer material in that ZoomX foam. When softer is probably not the exact best word to use for it because when you're just walking around, you're not really compressing that airbag. And so it might seem kind of firm and it almost seems like to me, like there's almost a negative heel drop when you're just walking around doing some warm up paces. But once you start getting up to speed, like up to marathon pace, then you're really starting to compress that airbag and push into it. And as your foot hits the ground, it hits it and it just absorbs that impact really nicely. And the way that these filaments are designed within these zoom air airbags, Airbag really isn't the right word for it because what's really magical about this is these filaments in here. They compress and then as they release, they turn that kind of stored potential energy into kinetic energy and it kind of pushes you back and gives back a lot of what you put into it with each foot strike. Combined with the carbon fiber plate that sits sandwiched right between a thin layer of that ZoomX foam and that Zoom Air pocket, and you have a really nice system that just works, that pushes your foot forward after it hits. At marathon effort, I think that's where this shoot really tends to shine for a lot of people, and that's definitely the case that I got here today. I felt very controlled, very powerful. I felt like I was constantly pulling myself back because I was just so excited. I felt like I could easily push much harder, but I know that for the purpose of this workout, the whole point of the workout is to not to overcook it. The point is to get in that experience and that time, kind of get seat time at that marathon level and start working the body to be able to just stay and sit there for a very long period of time. I felt like I was able to do that really easily. Found myself having a lot left at the end of the workout definitely had a lot of fun. The toe box on this one, I mean, both of these shoes fit true to size, but the toe box on this one is not the most comfortable. You're definitely getting a racer fit. As much as I do love the Adamant and how breathable it is, and it's basically a see-through material that somehow still is very strong and is able to keep your foot well in place during the run. Uh, it's a little bit tight in the toe box for me and a lot of times my toes end up getting crunched, especially when I go on even longer runs than today. Today's workout uh, was supposed to be kind of like some semblance of marathon simulation, but at the end of the day, it was only 11 total miles. So I didn't feel too bad in terms of getting toes crunched today, but on even longer runs, that kind of like snugness does kind of start to add up. And that's really the main discomfort that I only ever feel in this shoe. In the back, they've got those bumper pads that kind of are sitting right on top of the heel, kind of in between the heel and the ankle to keep people in here. I feel like that's plenty for me to stay stable in this. Otherwise, there's not a lot of structure in here. Uh, there's just a little bit right towards the base of the heel, but for the most part, it's pretty flexible. There is a little bit of a rise and this could dig into some people in their Achilles, but for me, I find that it hasn't been a problem and the knit material is nice and soft. One of the things that I was able to test on the particular route that I went on today was what a sharp turn would feel like. So the way I kind of did the route, that last rep, I kind of went out a mile and did a, a, a hairpin turn. Uh, not exactly a hairpin turn, but a pretty tight turn. And the high stack on this 40 millimeters, plus a very squishy foam underfoot, did to lead to a little bit of ankle instability. Now, I feel like the footage looks a lot worse than it felt, kind of like me feeling it. But what it really translated to was not a feeling that like my ankles were turning in or that it hurt. It just felt like I had to pull back from the perspective of I don't want to fall over. So it's like uh, it, it does make you have to be a little bit more careful when the turns are tight. So if it was say like a 5k road race where I knew I would have more than one hairpin turn, 
Then it's a shoe that I'm not sure that I would reach for just because that stack height is so high. And in a 5K race, I'm not really worried about kind of like being able to withstand all the impact of the miles. And I don't need quite as much stack height. But to the extent that there are sharp turns, definitely very doable in the Alpha Fly, but you might have to ease off the gas just a little bit. Now with the Meta Speed Sky, I did the exact same route, the exact same workout in this shoe. And I got a very similar feeling as well in terms of that strength at marathon effort. And so I felt like for the first rep, that first two mile rep today, I just felt like I was in cruise control and kind of just done that forever. I felt like I was jogging and I, every time I looked down at my watch to check on the pace, I just was surprised that I was going at the speed that I was, given that I just felt like I was able to dial into a level of effort and just go. The FF Turbo Foam in here definitely reminds me a lot of Zumex Foam. And I will have to say of all of all the shoes, all the different super shoes that I've ever run in, I will say that FF Turbo is probably the closest to Zumex that I've ever experienced. It even has a kind of a loud sound when you are hitting the ground. So that like signature thwack that you might hear when you hear a lot of people running in like next percents. I'm kind of hearing a little, it's not quite as bad, but I am hearing a little bit of that in this shoe as well. It's slightly lower to the ground, but it feels like it's so much more planted. I feel just much more stable on the ground in this. The FF Turbo might be a touch more firm than Zumex foam. And so I think that also helps in some of the stability when your foot is hitting the ground. I don't get as strong of a carbon plate feel from this shoe. I feel in this shoe that the foam is doing a lot of the work and the foam is definitely the star. It might not have been cast as the leading role, but it's definitely in the leading role in the way that this shoe feels to me. But that, that overall, it really still works for me very well. I felt like I had plenty of strength at that marathon effort for the first and through the second rep. By the end of the last rep, I was pushing closer towards threshold pace and maybe even a little faster than that because the workout kind of felt easy running them in these shoes. Now, in terms of stability from a turns perspective, the width of the shoe is narrower than the width of the Alpha Fly, but I do think because this foam is a little bit firmer and because it is a little bit lower to the ground, I do feel much more confident taking turns in the Metaspeed Sky than in the Alpha Fly. So if it is a course that does have a lot of turns or has some hairpins, then I definitely would feel much more confident going into it with the Meta Speed Sky. The outsole on this, nice and grippy. I had some wet conditions on the day that I was testing it at these marathon paces. And it's like, other than the fact that I was wet out there, I didn't know that it was wet from like the perspective of my shoes. I felt very sure footed, just as if it were completely dry conditions. So this Asics Grip rubber compound, I'm a big fan of it. I really like what they're doing. And I especially love the restraint that Asics put into the rubber outsole. ASICS is not really known for having restraint when it comes to a rubber outsole. So I'm actually really proud of them for this one. They really nailed it. The outsole is fantastic. A lot of the things that I don't like or like the things that I don't love about the Alpha Fly kind of also apply to the Meta Speed Sky as well. This toe box is not the most comfortable and I'll say it's probably less comfortable than the Alpha Fly toe box because I just think that this angle here, it cuts off really abruptly and it doesn't really give my foot enough space, especially towards kind of like those pinky toes towards the outside. But otherwise the fit through the midfoot is really secure. This single layer mesh that's here is very breathable, very lightweight, very strong. So I don't feel like it has any problem keeping the, my foot connected to the power that's in this midsole and the carbon fiber plate. They go a little bit of a different approach in terms of the heel cup in the Metaspeed Sky. This heel cup is even floppier than what's in the Alpha Fly. And there is a little bit of padding, but it's more kind of like along this heel collar in the more traditional spot. They're not doing a bumper system, but I do prefer the fit of the Meta Speed Sky quite a bit. A lot of the same stuff that they went on in the Meta Racer upper, which I think is probably one of the best uppers that I've raced in recently, uh, is translating back over into the upper for the Meta Speed Sky. And that is a very fantastic thing. Once you put your foot in this shoe, it is not coming out. It is getting locked in there. 
almost to a fault. It takes a long time to get out of the shoe because the lock-in is just so good on this one. The other thing that I'll say is a little bit different about this, kind of like looking at these two shoes overall. I feel like the Alpha Fly is a shoe that is very accessible to a lot of people of a lot of skill levels and a lot of paces. I feel like it's very forgiving as well. So if you've got a sloppy foot strike, like mine's kind of a little bit goofy, or if you've got some other kind of inefficiencies in your stride, the Alpha Fly, I think will overlook it. The way that it feels from like perceptions in running in it is that it feels like it's kind of like unstable or wobbly. But I think really what's going on is it's figuring out a way to translate however you've landed in it and however you're pushing off in it in a way that's very propulsive. And so I feel like it's kind of like a anybody can drive this thing kind of car. With the Meta Speed Sky, I feel like it takes a little bit more precision to kind of like drive in this one, if that makes any sense. Kind of like, you know, turning traction control on or off. This is like it's only got traction control off mode. And so once you're starting to push things to limits, then like having a little bit more skill might be required for this shoe. Cause I just feel like it's a little bit more finicky, even though it is a little bit more stable and to the ground. I found that when my foot strike started to get a little bit sloppy, the way that I felt that was that I just felt like the shoe wasn't like as like springy. It wasn't as poppy. I wasn't getting like the magic out of the shoe. I felt like I was moving, but it didn't feel quite as special. When my foot drag was a little bit more clean, when I was focusing on my form and just like running tall, running pretty, then I really felt like, ooh, now this shoe, now I've hit that sweet spot. Kind of like if you're a golfer or if you're a baseball player, when you get the ball right on that sweet spot, there's just a ping to it that's very satisfying. That's what I'm feeling with the Meta Speed Sky. I'm not saying that you've gotta be some high level elite to be able to run in it, but I just do think that it takes a little bit more kind of thoughtfulness every once in a while to make sure you're kind of like on the right path and getting the most out of the shoe. So with all that being said, these two fantastic marathon shoes, it's been really tough for me to figure out which one I prefer, but I think for this battle, I'm gonna have to give it to the Alpha Fly. When it comes to running the full 26.2, I feel like there is a sense of effortlessness to the Alpha Fly that I just think that the Meta Speed Sky, as fantastic of a shoe as this is, still just can't beat. I think the king is still the Alpha Fly when it comes to marathon pace racing. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about either of these two shoes or if you disagree with my opinions here today. I'd love to hear about it. Or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do just about every day and we can talk and chat about it live. I'd love to see you guys there. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?